everybody it's sam here thank you for watching so today is my last halloween tutorial so i have a playlist of all of this year's halloween makes and i've also got a playlist which is just all of the halloween makes so i've got about five i think five years worth of different halloween projects so if you're new to the channel you just come across me today and you like halloween projects and check out those playlists and i'll have them linked at the end as well this one here i've basically gone back and looked at my five by seven and six by six spring hexagon pop-up boxes and with this one here i've not added the top part or the main panel so you can just have any scene that you want you can just create some fun little scenes using your stamps and dies to create something like this so this one here all folds down and that will fit into a six by six envelope. And if I show you just underneath here, you'll see the spring there. And as I let go, you can see how that opens. You've got your space on the back to write your message. And you can see the workings there and how you can just add as much as you want. You can also do this in any size that you want. So if you don't want to do six by six, if you use the base for my five by seven one, and then you can alter the springs inside and you can create it that size but I'll probably revisit this for Christmas. A lot of my Halloween mates I'm gonna be revisiting in different variations and sizes for my Christmas series. I've also got glow in the dark dots all here and I've used some of the accent glaze and I've just used all of my Halloween stamps and dies here. So let's get started. So I'm using the funky alphabet for the boo on the front of the card and then all of my Halloween stamps and dies. I've just mixed them all together, even the funky or easy edges. I'm using the grass and the trees on this one. So you want to make the front and the back of the card first. So you'll want two pieces of six and a half by four. And along the six and a half side, you're going to score at one and a half, four and a half and six. Now the height of this, I am going to be bringing mine down shorter because I need to cut the grass. So it actually will end up becoming three inches, I think. So if you want to cut yours, if you're just going to have it straight, then cut it to six and a half by three and just score the same way. But if you want to do a decorative edge, bring it up to four and then that's just going to allow you the space then to be able to add your edge. But I think three inches is quite a nice height for this part. Then for the spring pieces inside, I've got these three already. So to make those, you want four pieces of six and a half by one and a half. And along the six and a half side, you're going to score at two, two and a half and three, and then five, five and a half and six. So I'll just show you how I cut the edge. So I'm just going to take the grass one here and just pop it along the top. I've got my tab, the half inch tab on the right hand side there. And I'm just going to tack this in place and get that one cut. OK, so that's all cut. And then I'm just going to trim from the bottom so it's three inches. Like so. If you have got a border, because they're all going to be different, if it does go right off the edge, you just want to create a tab on the end here. So just cut a wedge. You can see I've already done it on that one there. Okay. In fact, I've stuck that one on the wrong way so I'm going to flip this one and just fold them all so my tabs are on the my tabs are on the left hand side but yours will be on the right hand side you just basically want to stick the two together like so so we've got one long piece but I've already stuck this piece on the back to write my message so I'm just going to flip mine this way so I'm just going to take my glue and just run that over the tab and then I'm just going to lay this one down next to it and the grass should pretty much line up there. And then if you flip it over, if you fold in your tab side there and just add some glue onto the top. And then bring over the other piece there until it all lines up okay and then when you bring it together you want to make sure that the joins are both on the left and the right side okay so you've got something like this but then we'll make the springs so I basically broke them down into these kind of sections here because I want to be able to slot my different kind of pieces here that you can then attach more to so I just thought this was a, an easy way to do it so you want to fold it so that you've got your two inch piece here so then you'll have a mountain fold then a valley then a mountain then you'll go across with that other two inch end and then again mountain valley and a mountain so you should have something like this you've got this 
folded inside so it can be stuck underneath that one there and then just add your glue there on the tab and just stick that together and like I've done on the other springs don't burnish it just fold them loosely you want them to keep that spring okay so just do that on all four and then we're going to stick them all together so next what I've gone ahead and done is I've cut the tree die the edge die here on these two pieces and basically what I want to do is have these so these are going to go inside this card here to be honest you don't need four you may actually find you just want to have three so in fact I'm just wondering whether three yeah I think three might be better actually yeah so I'll read that in the video I think three is going to be plenty and then that's going to work out better for these so you want to cut these so that they're going to fit within I guess you don't want them any wider than your front panel here. Everybody's going to have something different. So I'm just going to show you how I'm doing these. So this front panel is three inches wide, but I could go a little bit um, bigger than that. So I might do three and a half. So I'm just going to take my trimmer and then I'm going to bring this down. because I know that that front section is three inches high and I want this slightly hidden. So I'm going to do them by two and a half. And again, by three three and a half. Don't want to cut the trees off there. Okay. So the idea is you can stick these in between the springs. So if I just bring that up, you see there, so it's all going to fold flat. I think I'm going to probably bring that down a little bit lower. So I might not do the two and a half on the side. I might do two, just bring it down. And then I can take, I could probably just use that one actually. I don't need two. So it doesn't matter if that's a little bit shorter. So I'm just going to bring this one down to two. And then, and you could even, I mean, you could move the springs as well. Can you see how mine have kind of moved across there? So I'm just trying to get them kind of in place. So you see how that looks. And then I also want to stick the house kind of down in there as well. I'm going to take it all out again in a minute. I'm thinking I might have the house behind all the trees. So that could kind of go in there. It's, it's, it's kind of holding itself just because of the springs there. But I, I think I like that. Now the witch is going to be on, in fact, I'll bring everything in here that I've got. So I've just cut pumpkins. I'm going to throw everything at this card. Like I said, it's the last one. So the witch could be kind of, I want to make sure you see everything. I'm going to take some more of this off. I'm going to cut off the excess here. I just show you the process that I'm doing here and then you can easily adapt it to whatever you're using because now I know they're definitely short enough. So I think I'm going to have that one like that. So I'm going to stick glue on each side there and then bring it up so it hides the spring. I might even trim off the bottom there and just keep them all the size of the, the springy pieces and then stick that one on that side. Yes, yeah, so you could even cut off, snip that away as well. So I might just conceal everything within the springs. So I'm only making one, but I think you seeing me kind of adapt it this way, it makes it easy then for you to you you know see how you can use your stuff. Again, just take that off there. So, I mean, everybody's is going to be different depending on what you're using. You might not be able to snip down like I can because of the, the edge that you're using. Again, I'm just going to snip as much of that away so it hides within there. And then I'm going to have these trees in here. And then I think I want to get the house in there as well. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue on both sides there. So I want the house right at the back. Like so. Because the witch, I can pop the acetate behind the house there. 
But that's everything I think I need to have stuck in the springs. Everything else I'm going to stick and build up around it. So now what I can do is add my glue onto the front here. And then on the back. And then you can just squash that in enough there by holding the two middle parts and then pop it inside here. And it depends how much you you want showing. So I'm going to bring mine higher up there. I think that's probably about right. Because you want to make sure that this is to go in a six by six envelope. So now my witch can be kind of there. And I think, yeah, if you mark on your mat, so that's going to be, I can bring her up a bit more. That she's going to be just behind the house. So let's have her there. So I know that's all going to fit into my envelope. So I'm just holding that. I'm not pushing too much on the folds again on the spring parts because you want them to spring up. But I'm just applying enough pressure. There we go. You can see there how that's all going to pop up. So I'm going to, in fact, I'm just wondering if I even need some acetate. I reckon her broom will be enough to attach there. So I'm going to stick her on there. And then what I've got is the boo, which I've taken from the Funky Alphabet. And I've just used some foam, double-sided foam adhesive. So I stuck the white on the front. I've got black foam there, so it just ties in with the theme and the paper here. And then there's adhesive on the back, so I can just peel those off. And I'm going to have boo, something like that. We've got the witch's cauldron, which I thought could hang off the side there. And then I've got all these pieces which can just stick on the different parts in here. So I've got the, I have the fence in there, I think. I've got pumpkins, which maybe have one down here. We've got the gravestones, which I was going to have stuck right behind here. So I'm gonna have a play around, pop this all on high speed, and then I'll show you it when it's all finished. So that's everything stuck down. I'm really pleased with this one. It's come together really nicely. What I'm going to do is add some glow in the dark paint. I've been using this on a lot of my Halloween projects and I'll be also using it on a lot of my Christmas projects. I thought it would look really good to go over the top of the witch's cauldron here. And I've, I've already put accent glaze on there, which is why it's already shiny. You can probably hopefully see it there. And I've popped it on her face as well. But I'm thinking now I should have put this on the windows but I'm going to pop it on there and I'm going to do a few little blobs around the boo there we go I'm quite mad with it but it does look really effective and I found that the thicker you do them the more they glow so they do settle a lot they get absorbed by the cardstock but I do find you get a much stronger glow when you you know apply them a bit thicker but I think I'm going to leave it there I'm going to step away from the card because I'm really pleased with this one. I think it's come together really well. So thank you as always for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed all of the Halloween projects that I've shared this year. I do have a playlist with all of the Halloween projects on and I will share that here, be popping up one of these sides here. And I'll also have another fun project that you might wanna watch next. If you've enjoyed today's tutorial and you're not subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell and that way you won't miss out on any future videos. As always, all of the products that I've used today will be shared in the description box below and I'll be back again very soon. Take care. Bye.